Ultraman Gaia is something that's hard to talk about for two big reasons. One, it's generally become one of my favorite Ultraman shows, top three at least, but two, and more importantly, a lot of the ideas and creative direction for this series was influenced by Chiaka J. Konaka, the writer behind Digimon Tamers and other critically acclaimed anime. The reason that it's difficult to talk about it is because of the last two years, Konaka has been involved with some problematic beliefs that are related to QAnon, cancel culture, political correctness, and other such BS that was brought to light during Digifest 2021 where he wrote these ideas into a Digimon Tamer stage drama. I've thought long and hard about it, and I've come to the conclusion that a lot of great people besides Konaka worked on Gaia, and his creative philosophies at the time behind the show still have merit that I want to praise. So I want to say upfront that any praise I give for Gaia is merely the show itself and the old Konaka and not modern Konaka as of the making of this video. We got it? Okay, cool. With all that being said... I freaking love Ultraman Gaia. Conceptualized as the first plot-driven Ultra show with ongoing character drama and threats, rather than the one-off Monster of the Week stories of past shows, the creative team behind Gaia want to push against the childish stigma Tokusatsu had from adult viewers by telling a more grounded story that focused on humanity's relationship with the Earth. The ultimate goal for Gaia was for audiences to walk away from the show with a great amount of love and respect for the planet, while carrying deep fears of everything that can or is going wrong if we don't take care of it. A very interesting proposal, as most stories of this kind want audiences to walk away feeling better about themselves and the world, while Gaia wants to set an existential dread about the planet's future with a positive nudge to make sure you can help where you can. And the vessels for these messages comes via the two main protagonists, Gamu Takeyama, aka Ultraman Gaia, and Hiroyu Fujimiya, aka Ultraman Agul. Starting with Gamu, he's a science prodigy in quantum physics, which makes him more of a nerdy character when it comes to his strategies and personalities than the average Ultra host. He was specifically chosen by Gaia for his passion for humanity and Earth, something he carries through the series, especially when conflicting with the secondary Ultra host. You honestly can't talk about Gamu without mentioning Fujimiya, because the development of the two are so intertwined with each other. While both characters are science prodigies, Fujimiya was shaken to his core when his life's work, a supercomputer called Crisis, told him that the Earth was doomed if humanity continued to live on the planet. This concern broke him and made him convinced that humanity needs to be eliminated to preserve the Earth. Later on, Fujimiya learns that Crisis lied to him, which causes him to give up Agul's powers to Gaia, which powers Gaia up to version 2, and originally that was going to be the end of Fujimiya as a character. It was just going to be a cool rival Ultraman that would only show up in the first half to spice up the environmental messages of the show, advance Gamu as a character, then crumble under the weight of the revelation that what he's been fighting for is a lie. However, Agul was a really popular character, especially with Japanese children, and his departure caused a dip in the show's ratings, so Tsuburaya decided to get the ratings back to where they were to bring Agul back for a redemption, and honestly, I can't imagine Gaia without this. While Fujimiya still holds contempt for mankind's treatment of the Earth, he is much more respectful for Gamu's ideals of a better tomorrow, and thus fights with him. Speaking of ideals, the ultimate threat of Gaia is the Radical Destruction Bringer, an abstract entity who is basically nihilism incarnate. The entity likes to focus on all the terrible things humans do, which should be acknowledged yes, but by letting yourself drown in such thoughts, you're gonna let yourself excuse all the shitty things people can do and fail to be proactive and a good person yourself. The show is not asking you to turn a blind eye to humanity's sins, rather focus Focus on what good you can do for yourself, your friends, and the Earth. Overall, I really loved Ultraman Gaia. It's an entertaining series that shows that Ultraman can coexist with a more realistic world, both in the fiction of the show and as TV that audiences of all ages can watch. Gaia, much like other Ultraman shows, understands that humanity is flawed but has the capacity for growth. But the way it portrays these messages in this show specifically through its dual protagonist in Gabu and Fujimiya makes for one of the best explorations of those themes in the franchise. If I'm honest, the final scene of Gaia set in some existential dread for me, as it told the audience to take care of the Earth and our fellow man. I'm currently writing this analysis in a summer that's seen record heat numbers thanks to the ongoing global warming crisis caused by pollution, and it made me think about if we all failed in taking care of the Earth. I don't have an easy answer for that, but all I know is, the heat death of the universe is no excuse to be a shitty citizen of Earth while we still have it. The Earth, much like a human, will die eventually, so while we have it and our fellow friends, let's try to do our best, okay? If Ultraman can believe in us, then I think I can try to believe in the good in humanity too.